As many of you know, Dr. Maurice Wood, the founder and former president of NAPCRAG, died earlier this year. Maurice had an enormous impact on this organization and was a very good friend to so many of you here in the room today. I'd like to invite Dr. Larry Green to the stage to make a few remarks about his good friend. What a privilege to uh, get to make some comments about Morris Wood. Uh, going to do this in two parts, a bit of biography, and then I'm just going to mouth off just a little bit. Uh, the biographical part, how many of you know where Morris Wood was born? Well, a, a couple of people do. So he was uh, born June 28, 1922, in Pelton County, Durham, England. He died at his home in Wintergreen, Virginia last, last March at 93 years of age. Morris was educated at Newcastle University in England and graduated from medical school in 1945. How many of you were alive? Not very many, but some. Uh, he served uh, as major in the Royal Army Medical Corps from 1945 to 1949 and was chief embarkation officer in Egypt. He returned to England as, uh, to do a surgical registrar stint, 1949 to 1950. Did you hear that? Surgical? Surgical registrar. And at the uh, Sunderland Royal Infirmary in County Durham. From 1950 to 1971, Morris practiced general practice in South Shields, Tynanweir, England. In 1959, he formed a group practice with five other GPs, and he became a teaching practice, and he developed and implemented a nurse practitioner concept, all three of which were totally radical, unbelievable innovations in the National Health Service as it was emerging. In 1969, he visited Canada and the United States, presenting practice innovations, nurse practitioners, and age sex registries, practice registries, uh, and in 1971, he did a sabbatical at uh, Virginia Commonwealth University, and then he went back to England, wrapped up his practice, and emigrated to join the faculty at VCU. Thank goodness for immigrants. That was a career. Then there was another one. The North American career spanned some 45 years, and it focused on research development. With David Marslin sitting here and Hugh Mayo, he quantified for the first time the content of family practice in the United States. This is famously known as the Virginia Study published in the Journal of Family Practice. In 1972, with uh, perhaps 30 to about 30 to 40 of the founders of family medicine in the US and Canada, uh, they met in Newport News and they decided to create a research group and they had low aspirations. They decided to name it the North American Primary Care Research Group. And he agreed to serve as its first president. He was president from 1972 to 1983. Jen, Jen DeVoe is the 18th uh, NAPCRAG president. Uh, Morris touched and motivated much, if not most, of the early development of family medicine and primary care research in both Canada and the U.S., and he was among the first family physicians to be elected to the National Academy of Sciences Institute of Medicine, now known as the uh, National Academy of Medicine. I'd like to make a few brief comments. I was 28 years old when I met, uh, attended my first NAPCRAG, and I met Morris. He tolerated me. Uh, my youth, my inexperience, and he actually became my friend, mentored me as if I were his equal. Uh, like many of you, I relish many memories of Morris, and some captured in the, that slide. Uh, examples, uh, I re remember sharing many good meals with good wine and fabulous conversation and debate about the proper, the proper database for primary care and the ordering principles of primary care, both of which remain unsettled, of course. Uh, I remember joining him for AIDA at the Metropolitan Opera and also for Motown on Broadway, uh, accompanying him to Johns Hopkins University uh, to attend the celebration of the life and work of his friend and colleague, Barbara Starfield. 
And so importantly, his finding $1,400, not $14,000, not $14 million, $1,400 in the very sparse NAPCRAG budget to make the very first cash contribution to the development of this country's first national practice-based research network. Morris would be uh, very unhappy with me and you uh, with any tribute that did not acknowledge his own gratitude to Erica, his wife, and his family, represented here uh, today by uh, Michael and Catherine Wood. Michael is sitting here. Catherine is sitting out there next to Nick Booth, one of Morris's friends. And he would also, I think, be very pleased to acknowledge his special friends, Carr White and Hank Lamberts, with whom he did much. He would especially want me and you to acknowledge his home department of family medicine at Virginia Commonwealth University, now chaired by Tony Kuzel, who's sitting right there. Uh, for their, they provided him with critical colleagues, supportive environment, and institutional support for his whole US career. He spoke of it often. He was extremely grateful. So now as we uh, uh, watch a video uh, tribute to Morris, let me conclude as we past presidents of NAPCRAG ended the celebration we published uh, concerning Morris in the Annals of Family Medicine a few months ago, adapting the words of songwriter Dan Fogelberg. The leader of the band is tired. His eyes are growing old, but his blood runs through our instruments, and his song is in our souls. Our lives have been a poor attempt to imitate this man. You, me, we, we're just living legacies to the leader of the band. This, we're talking today with Maurice Wood, who I, I know that you're considered a father or a guru if you would, of the department. So let's begin. share some very fond memories of Morris Wood. Uh, Morris was recruited by the founding chair of our department, uh, Fitzhugh Mayo, shortly after our department was established. And he helped to create a culture of inquiry in our department that lives on today. I uh, also recall him coming to our research team meetings on many occasions, even after he was retired. And we enjoyed and benefited from his contributions. The other fond memories I have is uh, many NAPCRAG meetings, Morris would join our VCU team for dinner, uh, sometimes with his daughter, and he was a very lively table mate. Uh, the other place that he was clearly lively was on the dance floor uh, at NAPCRAG meetings. Uh, I was out there too, but usually I went to bed before Morris did.
If I was a staggering pain, a staggering pain to rent Fly over to your house, baby, but you in your pain You all know he also was the person who established the North American Primary Care Research Group in 1972. That first meeting was hosted by the Riverside Hospital System, which was the site of our very first family medicine residency program. And our department was the administrative home for Knapp Crag until 1995. Very proud to uh, have been part of Morris's dream and that uh, his dream lives on in such significant ways. Uh, he was a very good friend and we'll be missing him greatly. Thank you. So before we call Michael Wood up on stage, he brought Morris's license plate, Knapp Craig 1, to give to all of us. Thank you, Michael. And the other really exciting, and I guess not all, all that surprising, but wonderful thing that Morris did was he left a life insurance policy with Knapp Craig as a beneficiary. So when Morris died, we were contacted to learn that he had left Knapp Craig a life insurance policy of $20,703.21. $20, he must have known we were gonna have a big fundraising campaign this week. But actually, in all seriousness, this award and this donation was what motivated and prompted the board to think about all of us donating 
and all of us continuing his legacy and appreciating this wonderful organization, this wonderful community that we have all benefited so much from. So this week, the board of directors decided that this $20,703.21 would go into the Wood Award Fund. Many of you have donated that fund over the years. So in addition to the $38,761.38 that was in the, the fund, we have added this amount so that we can endow this award into perpetuity in honor and memory of Knapp Craig's founder, Morris Wood. And it is one small thing that we can do for him, for the amazing, huge, huge, huge contribution that he's made to all of our lives. In his memory, Tom Bensagi, bring him up here, is wearing a bow tie that Morris gave him. Many of you also have gifts that Morris gave you as well. So thank you to Morris. And Michael, we'd like to have you come up here and present you with a portrait. Thank you so much for sharing your father with us. going to be difficult. Larry and Tony set me up here. <clears throat> um, I, I think my father would have been extremely humbled by that tribute. Um, <clears throat> and I think seeing all of these people in the audience today um, he would view as his crowning achievement. This organization, um, as evident by his license plate, was something he lived and breathed every day, and it was probably uh, the accomplishment that made him most proud. So I would like to thank all of you for supporting him over the years, uh, and for all the uh, um, intellectual stimulation and joy that you provided to him uh, through this organization. Again, Larry, Tony, thank you very, very much for that tribute. It was uh, tremendous. Thank you. <clears throat> 